What's going on everybody? Good afternoon, happy Monday. Today we have a Freightliner M2. Usually these things have a like a box truck on the back, but you're gonna see these on these little trucks. Uh, it's an ISB, ISC, PX9, a lot of similarities in this thing. So low oil pressure. So one thing we did, first thing out of the gate is we replaced the oil pressure sensor. I'm gonna show you that right now. Uh, that's usually my default thing as I check that first. I'm gonna show you why. So here is the actual oil pressure sensor that we took off of the truck. You look inside and some of my videos that I've mentioned before, we do have some oil present. Okay, it's kind of pulled and collected. Sorry guys. There we go. So I started that, replaced that. Uh, oil pressure still not terrible, but it's not great, okay? Fired up on a cold engine, less than 50 PSI, and then it drops down. You can see it dropping pretty quick. So we're gonna kind of go on to the next step, which is gonna be looking at the actual oil itself. Uh, this is the oil that we have down here. Let me show you that really quick. It seems like it's pretty thin. Um, it shouldn't be terribly hot, but let's take a quick look at it. I don't see any metal. I don't see any flakes. Um, again, look at that. That looks pretty thin to me, in my opinion. Last time I had something like this was actually an injector issue. It doesn't smell like fuel, but again, very, very thin. I mean, look at that. That is very thin. So I'm, th I'm kind of leaning towards a fuel issue. But what I want to do first is I want to just kind of cover some of the bases. Uh, the oil pickup tube, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to replace the gasket. Everyone, every now and then these might be the issue. Um, there's your oil pan gasket that you can see there. Uh, it's upside down, but you can still see it. There's the part number. I'm also going to replace the oil pressure regulator, which is right here, this little plunger and a spring. Okay, we're going to put that all original. New oil and a new filter OEM. So we're going to do that first. We're going to test uh, I'm going to go underneath right now once we get everything out of the way and I'm going to show you guys where the oil pressure regulator is. It's actually very easy to do. Not very expensive, but again, some of the things you want to do yourself. And again, look at that oil itself, man. I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, literally I just wipe it right off. It doesn't leave any kind of residue. So, uh, I don't think the issue is going to be down there. I think the issue is going to be up on top, possibly an injector issue. The truck has 200 and I think 260, 270,000 miles. So once Tony's done there, let me get that stuff out of the way for him so we can both get there and start uh, pulling some shit apart and I'll keep y'all posted. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so here we are. We are gonna be removing the oil pressure regulator just to kind of get that thing replaced. I doubt that that's the issue. I think the issue that we're having is gonna be an oil contamination. Here's our oil pan. Tony's getting everything out of the way. So we're gonna get ready to drop the solar pan so we can replace the gasket on the pickup tube. Your oil pressure regulator. Right. There's two that you're gonna look at again. I mean, there are not there are not two regulators, but the first one, sorry guys, here we go. First one is gonna be on the left. You wanna to go to the one on the right. That should be the correct one. It's a, it looks like a one in 114 socket. You're gonna take that out. You're gonna get some oil, so be careful with that. Uh, the spring plunger are there, so clean that out. You are supposed to replace the seal or the gasket on that bad boy there. So let me do that. I cannot hold it and do the work at the same time. So. Let me, uh, let's me let get this going and I'll show you guys what I find. And there you have it. There is our old regulator with the spring. Uh, they've kind of had this design for a while. If I remember on the old N14s and stuff like that, maybe even the M11s. Uh, the new one on the left, the plug you're gonna reuse, there is a seal, sorry, there's a seal or O-ring here. Uh, it's not rubber, I think it's one of those metal crush washer type. So I gotta make sure I get one of those. Um, but let's kind of do a little side by side. You can kind of see where the spring now again, it's not really an even surface. It's about as even as it's gonna get, guys. So you can see for yourself, one spring is a little bit shorter than the other. So not really a bad thing that we're doing this. It's a pretty good thing and it's not very expensive. It's something you can do yourself. Again, this is the plug that's gonna go in. Basically, it's gonna do something like this. So let me give you an idea. This bad boy sits right on top. This bad boy sits right in here and that's it. Now it does come out with a little bit of pressure, a little bit of force, the spring. So kind of be prepared for that. Um, not enough that's going to cause any injury, but just, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, because when you're going to push this bad boy in, I think we're, that's where we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some struggles there. So let me get that cleaned up over there. Let's make sure I got the new seal or crush washer or whatever that's required. And let's get that going. So again, you can kind of see the little height difference there. If I put it side by side, uh, there we go. So a little bit of a difference guys, not, not nothing, nothing to write home about. Let's see here. Jesus. So look at that. A little bit of a height difference. So I guess there is a little bit uh, something to talk about there. That's the bottom. It's got that little dowel. I'm going to see if that goes into anywhere or maybe that's just where the oil goes in and out of. But I want to double, oops, sorry. I want to double check 
this way I don't make any mistakes. Inside, it's just, that's where it goes. So off to the truck. Alrighty guys, we are back. So oil pan is out. There's our Freightliner M2 with the ISB, ISC. They're very, very similar in the engines. I believe this is gonna be an ISB. Got our oil pan out. We do, we did remove the oil, sorry, the pickup tube. Okay, as you can see where it's gonna get installed. There is a gasket. Okay, I'm gonna show you that gasket right now. So we're gonna replace that with a brand new gasket. There it is. This does need to get torqued down to spec. I think it's 89 inch pounds. Keep that in mind. You're gonna need to do that. Uh, don't cut any corners on that, guys. Always, uh, always a good idea to inspect. Make sure you don't have any cracks or any of the welds are broken, anything like that. If you don't have anything like that, fantastic. Put it back inside the truck. Make sure it's torqued down to specs. I did clean the block underneath. Oil pan, give it a little once over. Uh, cleaned it out with a little bit of a brake cleaner just to make sure I don't have anything there. I'm gonna put the new gasket on there, but what we like to do is this. Let me show you guys. Uh, all right. Here is our oil pan. There is the part number. So we're using an OEM product. Uh, I guess you could go aftermarket, but that's up to you guys. I'm not gonna take a chance on it. Everything, I just try to stick with the original. If there's nothing else left, well then, hey, you guys gotta do what you gotta do. Some of these, to my understanding, will either use a gasket uh, or they will use uh, like a Permatex of some kind, like a silicone, whatever adhesive. I'm gonna go straight with this. Uh, We're gonna secure this to this using a little bit of uh, some shellac. Let me show you what we right, there use. There we go. So you can see that gasket shellac. Um, who makes this thing? I have no idea. There's probably a couple of different manufacturers that make this, but anyway, really good stuff. I like it. It's a little sticky. It's kind of like a tar type thing. But uh, I, what I do is I apply it to, to the, um, in this case will be the oil pan, apply a little bit on there, make sure it's, uh, it dries pretty quick. But again, it's just mostly to make sure this sticks. I don't like to use silicone on there. I am gonna use a little bit of silicone over there. I'm gonna show you where, because on the block where the housings meet, there's a little seam. Some of you guys are familiar with that, whether it's a Cummins, whether it's a DD-15, they're all gonna have it. And it is recommended that you use a little bit of Permatex in the corners or the seams. I'm gonna show you that right now in a second. Alrighty guys, let's go take a look underneath. Show you guys the, uh, hopefully the end result here. I know it's not very clear, but what you wanna do is kinda of get all this nice and clean, use a little bit of brake cleaner. We did use uh, something to kinda of scrape everything, kinda of sand it on down, not too much. And again, what you're gonna to wanna to do, hold on guys, let this uh, trash truck pass by. Right here in these corners, one, two, There we go. Three and four. What you want to do is you want to make sure that those corners are uh, a little bit, again, a little bit of silicone, a little bit of Permatex. That way you don't get any oil leaks through the seams on the side. Uh, right now I just need to make sure I see where the gasket's going to get it mounted because there is a little ear or a tab and I want to make sure that I want to make sure that that tab does not hit because it will. There's a little edge right here. See that? It's the only side that has it. So let me take a look and uh, we'll go from there. All righty, y'all. We are back. So got everything cleaned up as best I can. Everything around the block, front, rear housing, all that. Now I did apply a little bit of Permatex just to the corners, like I mentioned. In the front, you've got one on the left, one on the right. At the rear, you're going to have the same thing over there. You're going to apply that there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It's gonna be the 10 millimeter bolt. It does have a little torque sequence. It looks like it starts from the center, works its way out. So kind of a one, two, three, four, five, six, on and so forth. So it starts in the center and then kind of goes in an X pattern and works its way out. So keep that in mind. Again, 10 mil, um, this is gonna be probably the hardest one to get to. These up in the front. Don't worry about those just yet. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You might need to do something like this where you're gonna have to lift up a corner so you can get that clearance right here in this area. Uh, be safe about this, guys. You don't want your jack stand to, you know, go out the other way, your bottle jack or anything. So be very careful with that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So let me make sure we have the right clearance. Let's get the tools. Let's get this thing together. And unfortunately, I can't really record that because I'm still using my phone. No GoPro. We're getting there. All righty. We are almost done with this particular truck. Tomorrow morning, I have to go pick up a drain plug for that, the oil drain plug on the pan, just because I didn't really like the way it was leaking a little bit. So let's just put a new one. They're fairly inexpensive. Tomorrow, we're gonna put a brand new filter on, LF9009, made by Fleet Guard. I like sticking with the OEM. We're gonna be putting some new motor oil inside. Uh, it's gonna take about four and a half to five and a half gallons. 
uh, start off on the low side and then just kind of check the dipstick and go from there, guys. So easiest way, this way you're not overfilling it and this way, this way you're not underfilling it. Uh, here we go. So here's the end result. Let me, I can't zoom out any further, but we've got everything all torqued down. Uh, there is a torque spec for them. And again, there's a torque sequence. So we went ahead and got all that done. Uh, the most difficult thing you're going to encounter is getting those four bolts up here in the front. One, two, three, and then there's a fourth one. The two in the middle are the most difficult just because of the way the uh, the way this oil pan sits. It kind of just tucked in really nice. So it does make it a little difficult to reach. Uh, back here, you do have some brackets. So make sure you guys get these brackets back into place. That way it holds the batteries in place. Everything should be sitting nice and pretty. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. So I got everything done for the day. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and replace this oil drain plug. Uh, we're going to put a new one in there. We're going to put a new oil filter. goes right in there. Hit it with the oil, fire it up, and then double check. Make sure our pressure is good. Um, may have to do a road test or a few, you know, a road test a couple times to make sure that that oil pressure is not dropping. If it's not dropping anymore, then we should be okay. If the oil, it gets diluted or thin, then more than likely we have another issue coming up from on top. Uh, the sister truck of this one had a very similar problem and it ended up being injectors. But again, you have to check the things that are kind of, that can cause those problems. So oil pressure sensor sits right above there by the starter. We checked the oil pickup tube. You have to check that for any cracks. We did put a new gasket. Uh, I did the oil pressure regulator. You don't have to do that. But again, these are little things that I do as a shop. Uh, whatever works for you, again, that's your that's your business. So we got this all done. We are all set for now. Tomorrow morning, we're going to go ahead and put the drain plug, filter, oil, fired up, and then do some road testing and go from there, guys. So we will be back tomorrow morning and hopefully finish up this and have a good, successful all righty. We are back. It is the next day. Morning, fresh start, new oil, new oil filter. It did take about five and a half gallons. So we got all that squared away. And again, we want to focus on the oil pressure itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Ready? All right, make sure the coast is clear. Let's fire it up. Uh-oh. There we go, look at that oil pressure. What a difference. Yesterday when I fired it up, it was less than 40, less than 50. Right now, brand new motor oil, new filter, 70 uh, above 75 PSI. That is a good sign, I do like that. Um, it doesn't mean we found the source of the diluted oil. Again, it could be injector, so you may have to run the truck, let it get hot, let it get under load, and then go from there and get a good idea of what's going on. So for now, guys, again, 252,000 miles. I was a little wrong on my uh, estimate there, but what a difference. What a difference there. 75 PSI versus yesterday. I don't believe I recorded that, and it was less than 50 PSI. It was down to like right around where the tip of my fingernail is, so maybe 40, 45. So right now we're at 75. That is really good motor oil uh, pressure, engine oil pressure. I like that. I'm going to let it warm up. I'm going to check for any leaks. And if I don't have any leaks, I'm going to go ahead and do a trip, a little uh, little road trip, test this bad boy out. Everybody say hi to Chavo. Chavo, saluda. <laughs> All righty. So always important, guys. Walk around the truck. Make sure you don't have any leaks, any other issues. Um, you know, just, just keep an eye on it. Everything so far so good. I got to let it warm up and we'll go from there. Hopefully there will not be a part two of the video, but we'll go from there. Guys, have yourself a great day. All I ask is two things, like, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Thank you.